Hey guys, before you go out and pick up that free boat you just saw on Craigslist or Marketplace, watch this video real quick. Let's go over boats that you shouldn't buy. You don't want a boat with an OMC outdrive system like this. They're absolute trash and they always have problems. Now, Mercruiser I'm more familiar with, so that's why I usually tend to have more of the Mercruisers to try to get them. To me, they're just a little more simpler to work on. Now these outdrives are really simple to work on. Anybody can do it with uh, just basic set of tools. To change this water impeller, there's two bolts here, same on the other side, and then there's one going through the top, one through the bottom. And then you just take that off and you can get to the water impeller. And if you have to take the outdrive all the way off, there's six bolts here. And there's one on each side of this ram, and then you you pull the whole outdrive off. There's a gasket here, and I think a little O-ring, uh, and that would be to service this section here to get to the shift cable bellow, the exhaust bellow, and the drive shaft bellow. And you only really need one special tool, and it's this. This goes into here and undoes the bolt that's here to take this whole part out. Really simple to work on. There's also that bolt. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then on the other side, two more, so six, seven. If you don't you know, inspect your bellows enough, they can get cracks in it and you won't know it, and uh, water will get into either the exhaust or the actual drive shaft, and that water can get into the boat. And if the top bellow gets cracks in it and water gets into the uh, drive shaft bellow, it will rust out the U-joints uh, that are in here and it will destroy the seal here and all the gear oil that's in here will get hot and it'll expand and it will go into this area here and mix with the water and it will ruin your outdrive. Also for the shift cable bellow right here, this little one, I've had it where it actually tore because you're, you're constantly moving this in and out when you're going to the boat ramp, trying not to destroy your boat um, outdrive here. That will split and water can actually get into the boat when the uh, outdrive is uh, not completely pressed in. I always save the Mercruiser parts from all the boats that I demolish if they're not going to be rebuilt. This is a housing unit, lower unit, and I've got the upper unit right there. Now this is the older style pre-alpha. You want to try to stick with anything alpha or newer. Alpha outdrives will always have a flat top so there's no hook here and uh, they range from years I've they they can even be like a 70s like a 70 like uh, four I think 74 and up now, there's so many different like styles of these outdrives there's there's alpha 1 gen 1 there's alpha 1 gen 2 there's there's bravos there's bravo 2s I think even a bravo 3 there's just so many different like configurations of these outdrives I've only had the alpha style and pre-alpha. This is also an alpha. This is an alpha one. This is a 98. Now, about six years ago, I would be picking up any kind of boat that I could find that I thought would be a good project. And they're not, a lot of them are junk. And I found that out the hard way. So we're gonna walk out to another boat. See, this is an old OMC outdrive. And it's almost just like the uh, Volvo Penta style because you can change these props, but not as easily as you can on the uh, Mercruiser boats or the uh, newer Volvo Penta. Now, I came out here yesterday to look at this boat and then I smacked the boat or did something and these little guys flew out. I was like, oh gosh, I'll get them later with some uh, wasp spray. There was only five of them earlier. They're just multiplying quickly. So this boat right here had the uh, Volvo Penta V8 in it, which is in my uh, shipping container. These are not that great to uh, work on either, but they're still not as bad as the old OMC. This is the outdrive. See, there's a lot of different moving parts that you have here, and all this stuff has to come off 
in order to change these bellows out and it's just a pain in the butt to do that and these propellers you can't change them out as easily or as common as you can on the mercruiser boats here see this is a mercruiser also but this is an older one but see the prop they're all pretty much interchangeable but i don't know how to even change the bellows on these this is a i think this is like a 60 something the uh, 72 and up i know how to i know how to change the bellows on these but not this one i don't even know how to get that out the other ones the uh 72s and ups they usually have a screw here or a bolt an allen bolt that goes in and you can uh take that off and this whole housing comes off and you can get to the bellows this one i have no idea how to even get to that now this boat does run it's a 140 horse four cylinder but uh i picked this up for free too but it's such in bad condition nobody's gonna buy it so i might give it away for free or it just might meet the excavator and i'll sell the trailer that boat over there is a 72 that's what i pulled the motor out of and sold that boat was actually in decent condition but it's probably never going to see the water either so this is the pre alpha that came off of that big uh, blue and white sea ray in the far right corner of my property and just like that other small boat this right here comes apart but on that smaller boat i don't know how it comes apart see right here you undo this it's for the trim tabs that go they just sit in there like that but you undo that and this whole assembly comes out and you can take the uh, bellows and replace them. These are a lot easier to work on than uh, the other old one because I have no idea how to even take that one apart. Now this boat here I pretty much scored on. I paid $7,500 for it. It's a 98 Bay Liner. This thing's really nice inside. The only thing I've had to do to it is I replaced the lower impeller and the upper uh, water circulation pump i've only taken this boat out once I'll find a time to take a boat out it's just pain in the butt but this has a 5.0 engine in it it's got the seats that wrap around the back it's got a little cuddy cabin down there it's got fish finders that are old and don't work because they're 98 they're old but for 7500 bucks this thing was perfect Morning, everybody john here about to head out to Grass Valley to pick up a free boat. Now this is a free boat that I picked up a while ago and I try to get them only with Mercruiser outdrives and engines. This is an OMC and these are pretty hard to get parts from from what I've been told. I've never really tried to but OMC is kind of just crappy outdrive to me. So I'm gonna pull these wheels and tires off of this boat. I'm gonna head out to Grass Valley and Hopefully I don't need these tires. Hopefully I can just air the ones up and just haul it away. I've been doing this tractor service for about seven years and I've mixed in junk removal, car removal, RV, trailer, and all that kind of stuff, removal. I'll do grading, I'll do brush mowing, I'll do field mowing. And that stuff has pretty much died off the last two years. I rarely get calls. I've got ads on craigslist i've got ads on marketplace i used to use yelp i used to use google and i don't really use yelp or google anymore i mainly use craigslist and marketplace it's pretty it's pretty dead right now for me at least and with the amount of debt that i have got myself into which is about 15 to sixteen thousand dollars a month it's pretty hard to make that every month so I, I dug myself a hole and I'm trying to get out of it. I had two credit cards with Chase that were just, they were just absolutely killing me on the interest. They were about 30% each. And I thought I would be able to pay those off pretty quick. And you know, once work started to go downhill, it, it wasn't happening. So I was only making the minimum payments, which was about four to $500 a month. And then the interest itself was four to five hundred dollars a month. So every time I'd pay that credit card down, even a thousand dollars, the next month it was jumping right back up. So I went to Golden One and I got a loan for twenty six thousand dollars. I paid off both of those credit cards. Now I've got a loan that's only like I think ten percent versus the thirty percent, which is a lot easier to handle. But then I went and bought myself another brush mower. 
thinking, oh, you know, I need it, you know, I can make it work. And realistically, that thing's probably not going to be used for a year because I've got lists everywhere for mowing. Nobody wants to mow. They either want disking or they don't want to do anything because they don't care because it's grass and they're like, it's grass. It's, you know, who cares? Well, the fire department cares, the city cares, and your neighbors that are tired of looking at your lawn care. But I can't make them care. So just like right now, I'm rolling the dice, hoping that this boat that I'm gonna go get for free is worth something. Now, usually if it's free, it ain't really good. But, you know, I'm hoping it is. The lady said that it used to be her father's boat. And he passed away. They're selling the house. They didn't really want to deal with hundreds of people coming to look at the boat. So they posted up a free on Marketplace. And I said, I'll come get it. I don't really care what the shape is. I know you don't really know much about it. I'll, I'll come get it. So this boat has a Merc Cruiser in, engine and outdrive. And to me, they're one of the best out there. So just like right now, I'm on my way to get this boat. I picked up a big Sea Ray about a month ago and I was really hoping that the motor in it, which was a 260, which comes out to a GM 5.7 liter V8, I was hoping that motor was good. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't good at all. And I, I should have looked better at it because I wouldn't have picked it up. It had a cracked block, so it turned over good and that was my main function. That was my main, like, you know, you need to look at that, make sure it turns over. If it doesn't turn over, you don't want it. Well, I didn't, I didn't even think about the whole cracked block because I really, I haven't had very many V8 boats or any boat motor that's had a cracked block. So now that's something I need to look into every time I go to look at a boat. So when I went to look at that boat, I climbed up on top, I went into the engine area and I just turned it over. Well, right underneath where the exhaust manifolds would bolt to the head, about an inch down was a large crack and the motor junk. Even though it's got freeze plugs, I've never seen a boat freeze plug pop out like they're supposed to. Usually just cracks the block. So unfortunately, that motor is junk. I can't do anything with it. The heads are probably okay. Now here are two motors that I pulled out of the uh, boats that I have. This one's kind of rusted up. This is the one with the cracked block. This, they're both the same motors, so they're both 5.7 GM motors. This one's out of a Volvo Penta, this one's out of a Merc Cruiser. But the crack... It's right... Look at the spider web out of here, it's right there. The crack is right there. And I think it's on the other side also. Yeah, right there. Big crack right here. So, this motor is useless. The only reason I still have it is I'm gonna pull off the carburetor, the distributor, the coil, maybe some of the water pump stuff here. Same thing with this one. But other than that, this motor's pretty rusted up, needs a rebuild, that one's just junk. The carburetor, that kind of stuff can come off, but the rest of it's junk. So, it's just junk motor. I just screwed myself out of that. I demoed it. I picked it up for free. I, I paid money to, to take this thing to the dump. I got to deal with the gas tank. I should have just, I should have thought more about it. You know, I've got the trailer for sale. Nobody's looking to buy the trailer. It's hard to sell boat, boat trailers right now. Um, I've sold, I've sold like one trailer, I think this year as a boat trailer. Everybody wants a flatbed. Everybody out there and their mom is trying to buy a trailer to make it into a car trailer. Usually you would think, oh, the trailer's worth money. You know, I could do something with it, I could sell it. Not all boat trailers are the same, and not everybody wants to buy a boat trailer. Everybody wants to buy a trailer to build into a flatbed or a car hauler, and you can't do, you can't do that. You can't build a car hauler out of every single trailer out there, because most of them are not strong enough to handle the weight. Because most of these trailers that I get our camping trailers or boat trailers are not made to hold a car. A lot of people just think, well, if I just throw some wood on it, I can put a car on top. No, you can't do that. That's not how it works. And I know you can't do that because my cousin was looking for a car trailer and he bought a frame that somebody was trying to make into a car trailer. So it had the wood on top. 
and the frame was twisted in the back. And I said, we need to get this trailer gone. Just fix it up enough to sell it, let it be somebody else's problem because this is not for us. You wanna tow heavy duty stuff, this trailer is barely gonna hold a Honda Civic. This is the wrong trailer, we need to get rid of this. So he ended up finding another trailer and he couldn't afford it. We were gonna go on halves on it, so I just bought it outright. I think it was like 6,500 bucks. And that's the car trailer I still have till today. And that trailer, even though it's a heavy duty trailer, by Low Trail, frame cracked on it. Most of the time when I get these boats, the people who have owned them, usually don't pull the drain plug out because they don't wanna lose the drain plug. And nine times out of 10, when it rains, that boat becomes a big bath, just fills with water and then they never drain it. And then what happens is the water sits in there, it rots out the wood because it soaks into it. And then sometimes it'll get into the motor if it has overfilled and then it just craps out the motor. So usually when the, when the motor is full of water and it's fully submerged, it's actually usually still a good motor from what I have found. It's what happens is when the rain gets a little bit into the motor and then it either evaporates somehow or just kind of sits in there just a little bit of water. That usually rusts out the cylinders. But if you have a motor that's completely full of water, they usually don't rust. So I'm usually able to pull the water out of it and turn the motor over. So the last motor that I had was a V6 4.3 liter that motor was still good. It was full of water, but it was still good. So what I do is I pull the plugs out of them, drain the motor of everything. Hopefully it turns over at the time. And then I put a bunch of oil in the cylinders and I just rock it back and forth, rock it back and forth. And then I'll turn it over with the starter once it's full of oil. And I'll just keep turning it over just a little bit with the oil in there, just trying to clean up any of the cylinders. Now that's not a guaranteed thing to, to clean the cylinders because usually you're going to scratch the cylinder. But it's a boat and the exhaust is usually going into the water and if it smokes a little bit, not a big deal. So first things first, I get the boat to my property. I inspect the motor, see if it turns over, see if it has oil or water in the engine. And I make sure that it turns over first. And if it does, then I go throughout the boat and I look for other problems. So I'll, I'll see if the uh, if the floor is good, if the interior is crap, you know, what it all looks like. If it's worth trying to save the boat or is it worth just pulling the motor and out drive out of it and just demolishing the boat and then selling off the, the parts of it. Here's the boat. Draining all the water out of it. It's got a ton of water in it. The owner of the boat had passed away, so I received the boat from the daughter and her husband. And she was a little emotional seeing the boat leave, so I didn't want to record anything until she had walked away. All right, here it is. It's pretty clean. I mean, for the condition of it. I just need to pressure wash it clean all the junk out of it and if it ruins it should make a decent amount of money off of this thing but uh see that line there's a line right there that's how high the water was in this thing so that kind of concerns me I'm gonna check the oil first if it's really high then that means there's water in the engine okay so bad news it is full of water. So you can see the dipstick tube hole right there. And it's full, absolutely full of water. So I drain all that out of it, which sucks, but it is what it is. <clears throat> but I have good thoughts. I'm pretty sure this engine is still good and still runs because if it's full of water, that means that air cannot get to the parts 
and water can uh, rust it. Okay, first off, I'm going to get the tractor out of the way, and I'm going to put this thing in the shop. I'm going to drain the engine of all the water that's in it. Then I will pull the plugs, spark plugs. I will blow out any water or whatever's in the cylinders, if there's any. And then I will put some oil into the cylinders and I'll hook up a battery and try to turn it over. If it turns over, then I will fill it with oil, replace the oil filter, and uh, we'll see if this thing will start it all. I'll try to turn it over a bunch of times to get some oil pumping into everywhere so it's not just water pumping into where it shouldn't be. I am cleaning out the interior. I'm about to remove any of the water that's inside the motor with the Harbor Freight liquid removing extractor pump. So I've got the boat cover here. I'm getting all the stuff out of it. Got the water draining out of the motor. I think the battery is on the other side. Over there somewhere. I've been using a water hose just to spray the boat out. So far it's looking quite a bit better. I'm still draining out all the water from the motor. I've already drained out, what is this? Two gallon, 2.3 gallons, I've already drained out 2.3 gallons. Now I'm, now I'm at a, whatever six liters is in, in gallons. Okay, good sign is I pulled all the plugs out and they're a little wet, but they're not rusty. Rusty on the outside, but not the inside. So that tells me we should be able to turn this motor over with no problem. Well, the engine does turn over. The carburetor should be either replaced or cleaned out. But I was standing right there and I had this hammer and I was trying to kick over the starter because the ignition was not working correctly. And uh, I got a full cylinder load of oil in my eye. And I was not wearing safety glasses or my sunglasses. So I had to climb out of the boat blindly because both my eyes were full of oil, but mainly my left one, and then get over to there where the hose was and then wash my eyes out. But that oil had enough pressure to shoot from there to the ambulance, see all the oil? So don't do that. I almost have all the water out of the engine. I had to pull the carburetor off because I'm going to see about either cleaning it or replacing it. I also removed the starter because it's not, it, it turns over and spins, but when you connect these two right here, that's all it's doing. It's not connecting this part here because right now if I do this, It still spins, so this solenoid needs to be taken apart and cleaned up. And then the carburetor is just super kind of gummed up and rusty. I just got done cleaning all the little pieces, so I'm going to put it back together and retest it. Starter is all back together. Let's see if what I just did fixed it. works all right carburetor sitting here i'm going to remove the fuel line it for the life of me would not come off so i could not get this piece out and somebody had already tried to take it out and it wasn't working out so once i get this disconnected then i'm going to heat this up and hopefully be able to break it free a new carburetor aftermarket is uh like 75 dollars i got the carburetor all apart for the little day liner and looking at it, it's the same exact carburetor that they put on my bigger Bayliner, which is a 5.0 engine. So a little two-barrel carburetor they put on both motors. But right now I'm just trying to clean it up. I've got all, almost all the gasket off of this part. Uh, the throttle plate is pretty 
it's pretty stiff right now from from getting water in there and rusting up so i'm just kind of sit, letting it sit with pb blaster on it and i'm rocking it back and forth hoping that it will free itself cleaning out the carburetor here i've got a kit that i bought for my other boat which i'm going to use because i only needed like a, a little a little part out of it so i'm going to put this carburetor kit that i bought into this carburetor i'm going to put a fuel filter system on it because it does not have one and i'm going to clean all this gunk up this is off one of my older boats but uh, it'll work for this i save a lot of parts from these boats like fuel filter assemblies so i found one in my stash i got a fuel filter for it and i've just installed it on this boat here it's gonna sit right here and then the oil filter is right here so you can just get to everything Got the engine all back together, carburetor's on. Uh, let's see if this thing turns over and starts or does anything. I think it still has to fill the fuel filter because it's empty and get the fuel all the way to the engine. If it wants to. In a minute we'll take it outside and hook the water hose up to it. Let's just do it now. Well it's running. That's nasty water in that motor. But at least it's pumping water. I had to hook up a fuel pump. The uh, tank is full of really old gas, so I'm going to have to drain that. I originally was picking these boats up because I wanted to deal with the trailers and sell the trailers, but the trailers aren't worth much anymore. So now I just try to focus on fixing up the boats and selling them. So I just cleaned the interior on this thing. I pulled this behemini top, or behemini, whatever, whatever you want to call it, off of this boat. This boat's pretty much going to go to the dump soon. But this boat starts, it runs, it's ready for the lake. Cleaned it out the best I can. I need to vacuum up a little bit here, but this boat, I have it up listed right now on Marketplace for, I think, 3200 bucks, And I should be able to get around that price. Basically just because of the condition of it. I mean, it's ready to go. The floor is not all rotted out. It's a good boat. A little four cylinder, it's got a little fish finder. I was gonna pull it out and put it in my boat, but the uh, transducer cable is not long enough. And I'm, if I'm gonna put any kind of fish finder in my boat, it's gonna be a 12 inch brand new. Not this little nine inch screen or, actually that's a five inch screen right there, it's small. I mainly try to pick up Merc Cruiser because they've been around forever and they're still around. This boat over here is an OMC, and they're just kind of, they're more complicated, because you've got all these little relay packs here, solenoid packs, to control the actual engine going up and down, because it's got a hydraulic system. And these out drives are gear driven by here, and water sometimes gets in past the seal and it ruins the, uh, little motors that's in here and just messes them all up and a lot of the time these out drives on the lower units crack right around this area here why i'm not sure but i've seen a lot of them crack this is a v6 engine i think this is gm i'm not 100 percent sure actually it says gm right there but a 3.8 liter i try to get the 4.3s and the 3.0s and the 260 motors. I've only had one 454 big block, but I ended up pulling that out for something else. The This thing will actually run too, but the starter needs to be dealt with. This whole boat is full of water, just like that one. But this one's really rotted on the inside. The whole floor is caved in. When I look for these boats, I usually just try to get the Mercruiser because I know I could sell the Mercruiser parts. OMC, I've never had luck with selling anything OMC except for like a, a 5.0 engine or a 5.7 engine. 
But these Mercruiser parts, I could sell all the time. I like to pick up boats off of Marketplace and Craigslist. I'm constantly on there looking for them. I am only trying to get Mercruiser. I don't try to get OMC just because how hard they are to work on. Like a Mercruiser boat, it's got like six bolts and the whole motor comes right out of there. This thing, I don't even know where to start. It's got so much stuff on this thing to get it out. I don't even want to, I don't even want to pull it out. Because you've got hydraulic rams on this thing that are down there. You have to unbolt. And you've got the exhaust manifolds and all that kind of stuff that has to come off to get to any of the engine bolts. They're just such a pain in the butt to deal with. I don't even want to, don't even want to look at it. This boat's probably just going to meet the excavator. I'm probably just going to crunch it all the way up to the, where the gas tank is, pull the gas tank out, and then crunch it up the rest of the way. Mercruiser boats, I always pull the outdrives engines and the uh, the housing unit right there out and throw them to the side and try to sell them later. I've never had any Mercruiser boat parts not sell. I've only had OMC parts not sell. If you're in the market for a boat, always look for something Mercruiser or a uh, Volvo Penta. And if you're going to do Volvo Penta, make sure it's like 90s or newer. Because the older stuff's a little pain in the butt to get parts for, and they're a little harder to work on. The uh, newer, like 90s and up Volvo Pentas are just a night and day difference from doing any kind of maintenance on them. Especially when it comes to doing the uh, the bellows and stuff. They're like the easiest to do the bellows on. These are not that easy, but uh, they're, they're, they're doable. Just took it out on the river. Looks like it should. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching.